geeks worldwide welcome back to another episode we're about to take a wild walk on the geek side as always i'm your host dar sparrow and i'm looking forward to being back with all you beautiful people and uh we have an awesome guest tonight but before we get to this amazing man we got to introduce the rest of the crew as always my beautiful my lovely my co-host my peoples the wonderful christina and darren hi friends what's going on hello hello Oh, hi. I, I, I see you all. You survived your turkey day. Nobody's dead from a turkey in the coma, so that's good. I appreciate not, that. Not yet. I almost did, though. There was, there was a lot of leftover eating. It was awesome. Good. How about you, Darren? How was your, uh, how was your gobble day? It was great. A lot of good food, a lot of good people. Uh, missed my wife that day, though, but the kids and I just, we, we, ate, we ate in her honor. Yes, you, you had an extra, <laughs> extra portion for her? <laughs> yes, because she had to work. So. Uh, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I got to ask you because a lot of friends, you know, a lot of my friends and family think I'm an insane person, but I'm, 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 I'm into the Black Friday shopping. Okay. It's something that my mom started doing <laughs> eight years ago. We do it every year. It sucks that now, like these poor people have to go to work on Thanksgiving as well. Yeah. But we went shopping nonetheless. And um, I'm wondering if you guys did any shopping and if you did, did you get any cool geek stuff? <laughs> well, I mean, as, as someone who spent the better part of a decade working retail yeah. and working like at a re working at an electronic store, you can't do it, huh? <laughs> uh, no, I, I can't do it. Like my, um, it's it's almost a it, it's almost like I wake up with I still have P, like mild PTSD when it gets around <laughs> this time. Absolutely. Where it's just like, because yeah. I, mean, I it just it was it it was great when I started. I mean, it was the day after. I could still I could have dinner. Then it started becoming at midnight. It's like okay, I can have dinner, but I just can't sleep. Then it was the afternoon. I could have dinner, but I didn't have to go. And then it just became the whole day of Thanksgiving. So just out out of solidarity to the people that I know, to my friends who are still in the trenches, I just can't do it. Yeah, I respect that. I'm kind of in the same boat because I worked at GameStop for God, how many Christmases and Thanksgivings. Yeah. And since I was a glorified assistant manager, it was, it was like, I imagine that is what hell is actually like. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and the most exciting thing I bought was online on I'm a Cyber Monday. And this is how old I am becoming. I bought a zero water filter because it was half off. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Adulting at its finest. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's the worst part about it is, I mean, I, wor I worked at Best Buy for like eight years and, and, and most of it in the Geek Squad. And, I still want. I still want to shop the ad. I just. I want to. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have to. But see, the problem is, I have to find a Best Buy that I don't know anyone who worked at, so that I can like <laughs> sneak in and like a trench coat and a yeah. and a hat, and no one can see me. And it's just <laughs> you like. Look like you're gonna steal something. You look like you're gonna. Exactly. Because exactly. Like or, uh, I don't know what else, but I'm either a thief or a perv, but I can't yeah. just go and shop. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's funny, like, I think what a lot of stores are starting to do now is they, they realize a lot of people don't want to go out and deal with this craziness. So they're doing yeah. like free Black Friday. And mm -hmm. I actually bought like my biggest Black Friday purchase, which technically my wife and I decided that this is kind of what we were going to get each other for Christmas. So mm -hmm. we finally did it. We got a 4K TV and it's glorious. Oh, yeah. And, and the cool thing was I traded in my iPhone because I was going to get a new one anyways. And I got like 250 bucks back for my old one. So I bought my 4K Blu-ray player with that. Oh, yeah. Nothing on nice. it. Nice. Yeah, so, so my Black Friday purchases consisted of as many 4K movies that were on sale that I could get my hands on. <laughs> so it was like Wonder Woman and Logan, uh, Labyrinth, The Fifth Element, like stuff oh. I didn't own yet. And I was like, <laughs> what better way than to get it in 4K? So we've been, uh, we've been just, you know, eyes out of our brains, like watching all this beautiful stuff <laughs> on our new TV. So that's enough about shopping because we have we have a guest tonight because something very big and very important just hit the interwebs yesterday morning and of course <laughs> if you're a geek and that's probably why you're watching the show you know what we're talking about but you know christina and i have been talking about getting this awesome man on the show and specifically this show because we know he's like a huge uber fan of all things thanos and infinity gauntlet and infinity war and we had to bring him on so ladies and gentlemen our good friend we can call him a podcast host. We can call him a photographer. We can just call him an all-around awesome guy. Pat Loika, welcome to the show, sir. How you doing, man? Good. How are you guys doing? Uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're so stoked to have you, man. Since we started the show, we, we've been like saying, like, all right, we got to get Pat on sometimes. <laughs> Pat knows his geekery. We got to get him on to talk with us, man. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been this is like my first time doing a podcast of any kind since I retired my show. So this is like uh, this is this this is kind of it feels kind of weird to be you know in this yeah, sort of thing again, but I like it. Pat, Pat, there's a lot of pressure on us, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, buddy, that's a good spot to start, man. Let's talk a little bit because you had a very long-running podcast called Lycomania. Tell us a little bit about your show and how many episodes you did, man, and, and what you, you took away from that experience. It was – uh well, when I first started doing the podcast, I was just really annoyed by a, a lot of comic podcasts that was going at the time. This was around 2010 or so. Yeah. There's a lot of negativity in, in, in podcasting, like I remember some, I, I think I hit my last straw when someone uh, called into a podcast basically to complain about the way Tony Stark's mustache was drew, drawn from one book to another. And it's like, who cares? It's a mustache. Should I have my so, so it's just like, and then, and then there's a lot, of, there's just a lot of negativity that was kind of going around. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to do a podcast and just, it's going to be like a love fest for comics. Yeah, and it kind of evolved. Like at first it started with me kind of reviewing comics. Then, you know, I, and, and of course, I've been uh, uh, somewhat of an internet person for quite a while, and I've made friends with a lot of people in, in the comics biz. So it became an interview show for a while, too. So we were doing interviews, we were doing roundtable discussions, all that stuff. And it became this, this thing for a while where a lot of, like, there, 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 are different, there are different, you know, interview styles in podcasting. And then a lot of people, you know, a lot of people always tell me that. Like whenever people come on my show, they like it because, like, they feel like the 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 guests, like the creators we have on, are like more comfortable. They're more relaxed. It's more. It feels there's like an informal quality to it, but at the same time, there's a lot of info that's being thrown out there. Sure. So, yeah, that was fun. And then get to a point where um, I had a lot of stuff going on. I ended up, you know, I was working two jobs, and I was kind of feeling a little burned out of podcasting because you know, scheduling uh, guests. Uh, you know, working around people's schedules and all this fun stuff, it gets to a point where you're just like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I need to take a break or something. So that's, what, that's kind of why when I ended my run, I had about uh, nearly 300 episodes. I, I, I lost count because we did a ridiculous stunt to close the show out. Like the last three episodes were split up into like three shows each. Right. <laughs> like so, so instead of like three final episodes, there were like 10. <laughs> It's like it's two seventy eight point one point two point three or whatever. It's like it's like a Marvel comic where with the with the weird numbering. But say, it's like it's like a Lord of the Rings ending. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, I, I felt like if, if we're gonna if we're gonna end this thing, we have to go big. So I got as many former guests as I could, this, you know, for that. And I had like about seventy different guests on for those fin the final shows so i feel like i said i went out on such a high note like i can't okay i have to stick with this retirement because right. you know you you that, right? <laughs> yeah yeah but you know every now and then i get the itch to want to record again because you know i miss it it's fun i like talking to comics people like you know we we we, we email or we dm on twitter or facebook or whatever but it's not the same as like having someone like you know like this where you're just chatting with someone and you and you know, having a good conversation because the, the, the spontaneity is, is what I miss about, you know, those, co those communications. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Pat, out of, out of all the 300 plus episodes you did, is there, is there one of the, um, we'll say guests that you had on the show that you were, that you were particularly fond of that episode or your favorite guests maybe that you had on the show? I have a lot of favorites, so it's kind of tough. But I mean, Bri I mean, a lot of people associate me with with, with Brian Michael Bendis. Right. Uh, he's he's probably well, he's one of my as far as frequent guests. He's like top. He's like one of my top five okay. because you know I kind of gained my notoriety online because I hung out at his old forums, yeah. and that's where a lot of comics people got to know me. So that's like I built myself from that board and it just kind of carried on the other, the other parts of the internet basically. So, so Brian's always, a, has always been a big thing. Right. Um, I love Jonathan Hickman. Uh, he is, he, he's very candid in his interviews and he's not afraid to say, you know, if something is crap, it's crap. And, and he, he's very cerebral and his, and, and, and talking process with him is always fun. Sure. Um, Chris Anka is one of my, one of my good friends now. And, 
I've had him on the. I think he he is the record holder for having the most appearances on the podcast as a guest. Nice. Because we just sometimes we would just have him on to talk, you know, talk TV stuff or movie stuff aside from talking about his art. So yeah, there's there's so many uh, favorites there. Absolutely, man. That's cool. Yeah. Is there is there any guests that you didn't get to get on the show that you would have liked to had? I've had a couple of really cool people that you know kind of agreed to do the show, but scheduling just didn't work out. Like, I, I yeah, I like. <laughs> Actually, you, you mentioned Thanos. I'm like, I I was I was talk, I was trying to get Jim Starlin on the creator of Thanos and writer of the Infinity, oh. the Infinity Trilogy, but scheduling just didn't work yeah. out. Yeah. Um, he, I mean, I'm, we, I talked to him at the con. He said, yeah, he'd do it, but yeah. you know, we just couldn't schedule it. Right. And that's and there's that. And who else did I almost get? Like, there's this one interview that we were supposed to already record on that day, but something came up, So, and and we never had a chance to make up for it. I'm trying to remember who it was, but there's been a couple of those type of incidents. Yeah. But, but yeah, the, my biggest the biggest get that I, that I had that really – although I, re, I honestly was super nervous to have him on anyway, Jim Starlin. <laughs> it's, it's just, what am I going to say? This, the, 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 that, that comic you wrote in when in uh, 1990, yeah. like basically, you know, affected yeah, the trajectory awesome. of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Pat, I, I got to ask you, man, is what being that you you ran a podcast for so long, and, and part of it was an answer to the negativity you were hearing in other shows. Yeah. What what makes a good podcast to you? Like, what's something you like to listen to? Kind of what, what gets you going, and as far as podcasts go, I like podcasts that are fun to listen. I I, I like I like I was saying it's 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 really the um, how do I just, how do I say this? I like when when everyone's engaged in their conversation and everyone's passionate about what they're talking about. It doesn't matter. I mean, I like also if like yeah. You know, I mean, I mean sometimes you know us nerds we take pride in knowing our stuff mm-hmm. and. I also enjoy listening to people who are like willing to learn while they're while they're you know, talking about this. Like, you know, I imagine I'm gonna learn things from you guys as we talk, and we're gonna and you know that that's part of the fun. And I feel like when when I'm listening to a podcast and at the end of the conversation, I came out with some kind of new information about them or or whatever I'm into, then that's a good podcast. Or or of course, being entertaining is also a good thing to have, but. Right. You know, either way works for me. I mean, as long as it's fun, as long as I forget that time is moving, I mean, you, know, I, you know, I forget how long time passes, it's, it's a successful show. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Totally agree with you, man. And I, I, Go ahead, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to ask because, like, you, the way you, the way you approach uh, podcasts is kind of is the way I, I enjoy listening to them too. But I just could, just from a, just from a standpoint of wanting to try and wanting to talk to people and. Uh, having that opportunity like how do you like how did you first start just kind of talking to these people that you wanted to interview later like how did you how did you start talking to people in the in the comic book industry like what was your what, like where did like how did you uh, kind of broach the subject of uh, of maybe interviewing them well it, it's I feel like the way I got in is you know I basically cheated because I'm like, I see these guys at the cons all the time, and I said, I, you know, I, I hung out forums, you know, and they, they, were, they all know me from there. So I would see them at the con, like, hey, uh, Matt, like, I was a Matt Fraction. Yeah. And like, Matt, um, I'm doing a podcast. If I decide to do interviews, would you, would you be up for one? You know, and, then, and they're like, yeah, cool. And then you know, I'll just email him, and then we're setting it up. Uh, it's the same with pretty much everybody, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it, it varies. I mean, most most pros, you know, most creators or whatever, they're really approachable. I mean, yeah, I mean, we have. I mean, we are. We're all on Twitter, and on Twitter, you can pretty much interact with anybody. You know, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, unfortunately, with some of the fans that we experience yeah. online. But it, we live in a time where literally anybody you always want to talk to is like at the edge of your fingertips. You could just tweet someone and you'll get a response. And the thing about comics and the thing about comics creators that I've come to learn over the past few years is that comics working in comics is a very isolated industry. You're working by yourself at home. You're you know, especially you know, especially freelancing. You know, you're by yourself at home and there's sometimes you have no idea how this thing is doing like essentially like imagine how it's like for uh, creators like in the 80s or the 70s or whatever they had no idea how people are reacting to it and now they're getting in they're getting instant feedback because of you know things like twitter and you and you realize 
they're very appreciative of that. They're appreciative of hearing, you know, what people think of their stuff. So, you know, it's really a matter of just asking nicely. <laughs> Yeah. Since you have, you can <laughs> ask anytime or anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Now, I always, I always wondered if there was kind of a, if there was, all, if there was kind of like a flip side to that. Now, like before, like you were, saw, like you were talking about in the seventies and eighties, they weren't getting that immediate feedback, and now that feedback is just kind of right there on social media. Mm -hmm. So, do you, do you ever think that maybe that, um, that feedback could, could kind of hurt? could kind of hurt the creative process a little bit that like maybe maybe sometimes you could end up writing for writing for the uh the trend versus writing from what you uh from what you from the story you want to tell it's possible i mean i've you know but i mean ultimately you know edit you know there there are checks and balances in comics i mean they, you you do have a you have you have an editor and if you already had a plan and then you decide that you want to change that plan from what the editor approved, you know, they're going to, you know, they, they can easily put the kibosh on that. Or if they really like it, this new thing, then, then they'll, go, they'll go that way. I mean, sometimes you have to listen to the fans, too. Because sometimes, you know, you're, 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 so you're, you're trying to please them. But at the same time, you're really not, you shouldn't be beholden to them. You just do right. what the story needs you to do. And sometimes, maybe, sometimes the fans get that right. And sometimes if it make if the story just makes perfect sense, the fans can't figure out where it's going, and that's when you know it's making sense because you can see it coming. It's just a matter of the, how you get to that point. Yeah. Hey, hey Pat, I have, Pat, like one of the coolest things that that I know about you is that you have actually been in a comic a couple of times. You stole my question. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, so Pat, I gotta ask you, how'd that come about, man? Sometimes it, it just happens. Like I didn't know. Like uh, one moment I'm just minding on my own business. You know, I'll get like a text from like someone, yeah. like like from Chris Anka. You're like, hey, uh, look at this. Oh, there I am. I'm a shield agent. <laughs> a really terrible shield agent, but I'm there. But or <laughs> yeah. Or like you know, one day I was just walking. I was walking the floor at Emerald City Comic Con, and the editor of the the, the Vertigo editor, uh, Jamie Rich, just walked up and he's like, "Hey, did, did you see the new Sheriff of Babylon yet?" I'm like, "No, why? Uh, look at it." Then I put proof like, "Oh, there I am, uh, getting drunk in front of a cat." <laughs> like, it's, yeah, you know, it's it's uh, sometimes I don't know, but they, they they sometimes I don't know, and sometimes I'm warned about it, and like. Yes. Either way, I, I don't care. It's awesome. Like yeah. probably, like there's there's like, like there's a bit where um, in the the Star Wars crossover Vader down, like Mike Diodato like DM'd me on Twitter. He said he drew that cha that first chapter, yeah. and there's like uh, I forgot what the plan it was. I think it was it, it was a plan with I think it may have been Jedi Jedi. I don't know, but there's like all these destroyed Jedi temples, and there's like a Jedi temple with like a statue. Of like a of a Jedi Master that had my face, <laughs> and like yeah, oh yeah. But then, no. But here's the thing: yeah. the editor, his editor, told him, "Now nah, you need to kind of destroy that statue a little bit." So he showed me the before it got destroyed picture, and then I showed the after photo, like after they did the the destroying stuff, and I'm like, "Oh, you can still see my face in there. Still pretty cool." <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so fun. So my dream of being killed by Deadpool in a comic is is still alive. That's that's something that's something I can hold on to. It's possible. I mean, the last time I saw my Shield agent, he moved on to be part of the. You know, he's 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 like an Alpha Flight core man. Last time we saw him, you know, in, in the space station. But of course, the space station has been destroyed a couple of times. So who knows if he's still alive? But you know, or or, or you know, in, in the vacuum of space. But who knows? Pat, I'm all for you, man. I think you should still survive. You're out there. <laughs> You're there. So, 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 Pat, you, you, you've been doing cons a long time. You've been, you've been a geek for a long time. You're, you're, you're what I would consider the OG geeks, kind of like myself and Christina. And I, and I, even though I've seen you around and I had, we have mutual friends. I didn't meet you uh -huh. until I actually got introduced to you, uh, you know, through Christina. How, how did you two meet, Christina? Tell me that story. <laughs> I honestly can't remember how I met you, to be perfectly I, honest. I think we were friends in the internet first because of uh, we have mutual friends. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, hey, okay, she seems cool. And I, like, I, I, think I remember like uh, you used to do like the 16-bit 
uh, Sirens thing, yes. and you were doing, I think you were doing comic reviews or something, mm-hmm. and, I, and I just added you as a friend on Facebook over that, and then next thing you know, picked up from there. I just know that I started hanging out with you more often when um, I went to cons, or when I finally moved to LA, I started hanging out with you, yeah. and it was so funny, because I could never remember exactly how we ended up ever connecting, but I was really happy that, that we had, because... Yeah, you're an awesome dude. So, well, thank you. Well, <laughs> the internet is a I mean, the internet can be a really cool place, you know, and and it, it really does bring people together. So I I I'm always thankful because I, I to be honest, a lot of the good fortune I've had as a nerd came from being you're just a guy on the internet, like you know, from those message boards. That's message boards and that, that do the podcasting, and then just everywhere after that, it's just you know, a lot of friends I made online. That and it's it just kind of escalated and it's it's nuts if you think about it. Like I built a pretty nice network of friends within comics and then fandom and whatever through the internet. And sure, it sucks. It, it kind of sucks that sometimes we only see each other at cons or whatever. But still, like because we we always you know we communicate constantly. We uh you know, we. We just kind of know, get to know each other. And by the time we actually see each other in person at cons, even though we only see them each other two times or whatever, we feel like we know each other more than most people we see in our real lives, you know? True, yes. Yeah. The, the double, double-edged sword of the interweb. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so before we move on to news facts, because I really want to get your, your input on the, on the big news from yesterday, but um, I, I got to ask you, man, because I know you've been working on this big project for some time, and, and our listeners and fans who, are, who don't know you or don't follow you, Talk a little bit about that project that you've been undertaking. Okay. So when I stopped doing the podcast, I wanted to do another creative thing. And it just so happened that I, around the time the podcast ended, I was getting really – I mean, I do a lot of cons, and I do a lot of photography for, for various websites or whatever. I do a lot of cosplay photography. And I felt like my cosplay photography is getting really stagnant. Like it's, it's – uh, I needed to do something new. And I've been kind of working with a couple of friends who have been kind of giving me advice on how to kind of, I guess, you know, level up. And I started, you know, kind of going high concept with the photography. Like I'm trying to bring more of the fantasy into the into the into the images instead of just the photography. So we we started doing a book. It's a cosplay photography book. It's called Four Color Realities. It's kind of a take on you know four color fantasies that we you know, we know for comics, and it kind of tells a story of what you know what got me to that point. And at the same time, it's it's kind of like a, I guess it's kind of like a collection of my the work we've been doing since January 2016 when I started the whole thing. It's all it's a two it's been a two year journey for this book to come together, like within. Like when I first started working on it, I didn't know what the end result was going to be yet. I was just going to take photos because I want to improve myself. But then as I put more and more stuff out there, I was approached by a publisher, uh, uh, Black Sparrow Press in LA. They approached me and they're like, hey, I would love to publish this project. And I'm like, well, you saved me the trouble of trying to find a publisher. So let's, you know, so we have a deal. And uh, they've, uh, you know, thanks to them, I have been, uh, I've been I've traveled to a bunch of different shows and cities in the last year, particularly just to shoot you know cosplay and a lot of the stuff that you know I was talking about Christina just now about how you know you, the, the friends you make online, you know that that really helped this project a lot because a lot of these folks I've never met before and they're they're entrusting themselves to me as a photographer and there's a lot of you know trust me this will look cool after we edit it i know this pose feels stupid this is gonna be cool when it's done so it's it's uh it's been a fun journey i finished all the writing we're down to just a few images to finish and then we go to press um the book will be we'll have a foreword by brian michael bendis as mentioned earlier and it will have an afterword by a Marvel Studios uh, senior uh, visual development artist, Andy Park. Yes. So. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's so yeah. cool. I'm so ridiculously proud of you for getting that nice. done. It's, Thank you. I, I've seen so many of the pages. I got to I got to see your panel at Comic-Con this year, and I was very, very, very impressed. I know I'd seen glimpses of certain pictures, and because we share some of the same friends, I've also mm-hmm. seen it on their Facebook. But 
it's a really awesome project and I love your attention, your attention to detail and you put all of your heart into it and that's what makes it so special. Yeah, and, and, and I think the thing I'm really proud of about this is that I feel like with these images I'm creating, it's like I push the characters because I know the characters. I love the characters. Mm -hmm. And I and you know, like little things about the characters I try to put in there because because how else am I gonna celebrate my nerddom by real you know, that that's like that's like me kind of showing off like, oh, look at this thing. If if you're if you're a super nerd like I am, you'd get this part, this thing. Yeah. You know, it, it, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it's fun. And I feel like it's uh I don't know. I, it, it's it's cool because I feel like a lot more people are kind of going that direction now too. So it's, it feels really cool to kind of be there as as the whole thing was kind of starting to pick up with that. And Christina, you're actually in this thing. Uh, we, you haven't seen your image yet. It's still being worked on. But you ah, know, I didn't we, know that. that. We, we shot the Black Canary thing in San Diego. Remember? Yeah. Like, yeah. So you'll see soon enough. Yeah. I'm so excited. Hey, congrats! Yeah. Your awesome. photography is so awesome, man. You, as as a cosplayer, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say you're like uh, you're the gold standard now. Like if I get my photo taken by Pat and get the look of treatment done to it, I'm like at the top right now. Okay, like you're, it's so cool, man, to see what you do with the images. It's amazing. Thank you. It, it's it's been fun. I mean, Graham, there have been there have been a, there's been a lot of stress involved, like in some cases, yeah. and there's a lot there, and there's a lot of work. But you know, I feel like it's worth it. Whenever you know, I I collaborate with a couple other guys who are in the Philippines who are like, you know, they you know they they basically help kind of with the digital imaging and all that stuff. And I love waking up in the morning because every time zones are different. So I will wake up in the morning at like 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. I'll get a message. You know, oh, got a new photo. Oh, right. There, so we just got a work in progress shot. And the next thing you know, a few hours later, here it is, it's done. And like, I'm, I get that's like the best thing, getting like these finished images. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's great. It's a, it's a fun little. Again, it, it, it's, it's also aside from being a cosplay photographer, but it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like a nice little thing of, of you know, it's nice. Uh, a statement on collaboration yeah. and, and and relationships because I don't know like you know my collaborations and my 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 friendships with all the cosplayers and of course there's the you know the aspect of collaborating with me you know, my my digital imagers and all that and so you know so it's uh it's it's a fun thing it's 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 a it's it's a work you know it, it's it's very near and dear to my heart so I'm excited to see it through and it should be out in the spring just in time for WonderCon. We look, we look forward to seeing it, man. We, we, we nice. The best, and congrats on it, man. It's amazing. Thank project. you. Uh, so, Pat, before we move on to uh, news with the gang here, um, why don't you drop to our listeners uh, where they can find you on social media, maybe check out some of the, the images that you're posting here and there from the project. Just find me on Twitter, Instagram, at Pat Loika. On Facebook, you could just like Pat Loika Photo Works, and you can see some of my work there. Um, I'm always welcome to chat anything. You know, it doesn't have to be about my photography or whatever. Yeah. I can talk about any kind of nerd stuff, and I'm, you know, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, my friend. We're, yes. we're about to get into some of that nerd talk, friend. So, you know, there, there's been a couple of age-old questions, you know, that have lasted the a lifetime, okay, and a couple of them, like, you know, will the tricks ever get the tricks? How long, how far will the Energizer Bunny go? And when are they going to drop the damn Infinity War trailer? <laughs> Yesterday, that question got answered when the Infinity War teaser trailer finally dropped, and the internet collectively lost their shit, all right? <laughs> like we yes. all did, okay? So, of course, um, we, we uh, as we mentioned earlier, one of the things I've known for a long time about Pat is he loves those things, so we, we had to get his input on this. But I want to go. I want to get the rest of the crew's input first before we get to you, Pat. Uh, okay. Darren, talk to me, man, about the uh, Infin Avengers: Infinity War trailer that hit yesterday. Well, I'll put it to you this way. I mean, you you sent out an outline of you know just potential topics that we were going to talk about, and literally, I was I, I asked myself, did something else happen yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> other than right. other than the Avengers Infinity War trailer coming out life happening exactly because I, I'd be I guess yeah. because I watched it so many times I didn't you know I I think my I think my child grew like two inches yeah. in that time and I just didn't notice but it's that's how I mean that's how that's how much I've been anticipating it and also how much I enjoyed it like I I honestly and I write I write news daily 
and I cannot remember what I wrote yesterday, but I, <laughs> other than the Infinity War trailer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing. And like, people could ask me, hey, I read this article you wrote, and I really enjoyed it. I'm like, I'm glad you did. I can't right. tell you what it is. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just, I literally thought at some point it was just going to be just, uh, this is going to have an article up there that just says Infinity War, Infinity War, Infinity War. <laughs> like, Avengers is like, just like, it's like some scrawl from like The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's all work and no Infinity War makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> Christina, were you ugly crying like me yesterday morning? <laughs> I definitely, I definitely, I definitely wept a little bit. Um, I love, I love the trailer so much because I thought it was equal parts showing us really awesome stuff, but also keeping it really nostalgic. So like, if you've been, if you're really into the MC. The, like the, the Marvel Universe, Cinematic Universe, excuse me, um, and I've been following all of the movies, they put little feel jabs in there here and there. Oh, yeah. And I remember when I was watching, I should have done a reaction video, because at least for this one, I was talking to myself. Because for Star Wars, I was just glued to it. But this one, I was like, you leave you leave Vision alone. I was like yelling at the screen. Um, <laughs> but I just think it's really cool. And of course, the very last part, which because Thor is very near and dear to my heart but the whole the whole last part of who the hell are you guys and i'm so excited to have the guardians finally get to meet the avengers and ah the hype is real i'm super excited and i know actually very little about infinity war i read bits and pieces of it um and then i know a little bit of it that's been weaved into some of the other marvel comics i've read so i'm actually kind of excited that i don't know a whole lot about it versus pat who knows everything about it <laughs> I, I'm, I'm definitely with you friend it um it was definitely one of those things. Um, I, I saw the perfect meme that kind of described my, at least myself yesterday. And it was like, it's a picture of a guy like waking up out of his bed. It's like, when you wake up this morning and the Infinity War trailer drops and he like takes off his covers and he's in like this full Iron Man onesie. And it's like, what day is it? It's Marvel day. And it's kind of, <laughs> kind of where i was at it's like six o'clock in the morning and i'm usually like the guy who hits my snooze like seven times okay i'm like oh shit the trailer and i get up and i like got the shower real quick threw things on watched the trailer and proceeded to you know just die from excitement and awesomeness and um it, it in that small trailer it really like you said was very nostalgic it did a really good job of kind of just bringing back like feelings of how you felt the first time that you watched iron man and you know you got that line at the end with nick fury saying you know i'm here to talk to you about the avengers initiative and you kind of like mm -hmm. what the hell does that mean where is this all gonna go and you think from that moment to where we where we're at 10 years later now and all the amazing movies that we've gotten and all these characters that we're gonna love, like seeing all that and you really just get a sense of that plus what's to come and how earth shattering it's going to be for the mcu it's it's a lot of like emotion and feeling just that they managed to pack in that small trailer. So I was a little yeah. bit off kilter at first. <laughs> yeah, it is an amazing, ah. yeah, it is an amazing like culmination of 10 years right. of, of entertainment. Like you've like, it's something that beyond just the amount of time that we've had with these movies, just how well they, they endure from the first to the, from the first to now. It's just, it's amazing to watch. It's, it's a lot, man, but, Pat, I got to hear what you were thinking, man, the first time you watched that trailer yesterday. So a little bit of context here. Yes, please. You, 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 you've talked about how much I love the, sto the story. Yes. And the thing is, when I was in grade school, I read yeah, I read the Thanos class, which is the story where he collects the stones or the gems, as they were known. And got to Infinity Gauntlet and then that and the first issue of Infinity Gauntlet that like, he does the most unthinkable thing where he literally with a snap of a finger kills off half of the universe yeah. and at that point you're like oh my god where's this gonna go and I was at that I was so uh, I was so sucked into the story that you know I lived in the Philippines at the time and I was like a, I was in like fourth grade fifth grade whatever I would bribe the school bus driver to get me out of campus so I could go to the mall where the comic store was so I could find the next issue. Yeah. There was a lot of that going on. I did all kinds of things. I could get out and get to the comic store and buy the next chapter. So I was – this is a movie I've waited all my life for. And sure. when I saw the – so I was I was at D23, and I was also – I'm not D23. But I was at San Diego Comic Con where they showed the D23 footage. Yeah. I saw it there, and I lost my shit. I was yeah. looking at that, and because they they the trailer that they showed yesterday has a lot of the st same stuff, but at the same time there's a lot of new stuff too. So when I was like, 
the trailer came out, like I was being a bad, uh, we were, I was stuck in heavy traffic on my way to work. <laughs> and, and someone tweeted, someone tweeted that the trailer was out. I'm like, crap. I'm like, I, I can't, I can't pull to the side on the freeway just to watch this. I have to get somewhere where I can actually stop. Right. So when I stopped, I pulled out my iPad. I, I used my, my phone as a, as a, uh, as a hotspot, yeah. and watched it in HD on my 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 <laughs> iPad Pro, and oh my God, it's the most amazing thing. I know, you know, I know some people. I, I mean, I've I've seen some mixed reactions from some people. I'm like, whatever, dude. This is just nothing tops this. This is it. Yeah. Like just seeing all those characters together. Uh, seeing, I feel like it, it just feels like you know the ending of like Return of the King, where like you know all these reunions, all these happy things. Like you see all these characters that you haven't seen together in such a long time. Yeah. Like they're they're coming together again, and now there's some new friends that are, that are joining this party. You know, you know from space, and it's like if because we've gotten to know these characters in the last ten years, it feels like there's so much more weight to to all these these little visuals that we're seeing like that shot of um you know steve uh t'challa natasha bucky sam uh rody and oyoke and all the wakandan soldiers like rushing towards you was like that was the money shot i was just like oh my god like i like you know we haven't really seen a lot of you know of of t'challa and all the uh, and the wakandans yet but man you're like you're so into them already because Look at that, you know. And I, I know it's also. I mean, there's so many things I could, you know, I could, I could go in this frame by frame. I, I, I like, I, I don't know how many times I watched it. Like they said, they said that it was viewed 230 million times or whatever. I'm like, I can't, I, I can't even count how many of those were me. But <laughs> about 30 million, it, those, right? <laughs> maybe. But I, I'm not, you know, I'm unabashedly excited. I, I'm not afraid to admit that I wept watching that thing. Yeah. Oh, and and I'm, I'm glad I don't do reaction videos because I would look stupid, but whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with you, buddy. I, I watched it all day yesterday on my phone, and as soon as I got home, I didn't know if my wife had seen it yet. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I watched it once, but I want to watch it again with you. I want to watch it together. So we popped on the nice new TV and we put it on 4K, and we're like, and we're both just like, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I know you gotta watch it in style, man. Yes, man. Yeah. yeah, I had to. I literally had to bring in like because my my wife had seen it. I made her watch it again with me, and then I like brought my children in like one at a time. It was like yeah. like I couldn't have them all in there because yeah. I thought like it's because one of them would say something and they just ruin the entire moment. So it's just like this is so everyone was just like a father son moment between the two of us <laughs> that we could share. And to what you and and Pat, what you were t- what you were saying as far as uh. The Wakandans, I thought that was probably one of the best things about the trailer that I enjoyed is because you have Black Panther coming out in February and you've got this coming out in May. So them kind of them like focusing on like Wakanda and Black Panther and a lot of those shots is just it is an amazing way to just have that through line of that connect of the connectivity of all these movies right there. Oh yeah, I mean you can't help but think now where where uh, I mean obviously they they like to do the two you know post credit scenes now. Like I imagine maybe post credit scene for Black Panther is what leads them all there, or, or you know, who knows? But but now they're really emphasizing that you need to watch Black Panther because it's important, and that's I thought that's a very smart way to do it. And another thing though, like I posted this on Instagram, but that that you know the Wakanda stuff that wasn't in the Infinity Gauntlet story, but that was in the 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 Infinity storyline that came out in 2013 by Jonathan Hickman. Like, uh, Wakanda is like a, such a central location in that story. So I'm glad, like, there's like, like there's a scene where everyone's charging and then there's like a scene in the comic with the, that's the same. So it's like, I love how it kind of echoes that book. So. We, we've, we've said this before and it's an obvious thing. Marvel knows definitely what they're doing. Uh, Christina, after talking to the guys, what's your favorite, one of your favorite scenes from yesterday's trailer? Oh God, I have to pick one. Uh, <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, actually, probably the montage of all of them, or not the montage, but the the scene with all of them running in slow motion with all comments behind them, because I have that on GIF saved on my phone, and I look at it like three times a day, and I'm like, that's awesome. Um, and then of course at the very end, because like I said, it's it's Thor and Guardians, which are two comics I grew up reading because of my my family, you know. Were, partner region and then i just liked the goofiness of guardians back in the day but there were those were never really popular comics when i was a kid so it's neat seeing the two of them finally like merge together on the big screen and 
Yeah, I'm really excited. This is, we've been waiting 16 movies for this. And then, yeah, I'm really excited about Black Panther 2 um, and seeing how it plays into uh, this movie. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it has a lot to do with Steve, obviously. They've inferred heavily that, like, that's probably where he's been hiding. And I'm pretty sure he's wearing, I, somebody actually pointed out that his gauntlets look funny in that, like, in that slow motion scene. I'm like, I'm pretty sure those are probably, like, Wakandan. They're probably Wakanda. Chalas. So, yeah, it's probably, like, extras. Like, Chalas, like, perfect gonna have these. So, I mean, <laughs> like, the, the shield is made of vibranium, so it yeah. comes from Wakanda. True. Right, but see, wouldn't it be bad? Wouldn't it be badass if, if, like, they just designed his entire uniform, like, almost kind of the same way? Uh, yeah. Yes, just have, oh, have yeah. like a vibranium cap suit. That would be amazing. Yeah. yeah, I mean that suit he's wearing there in that in that trailer is like you know that that thing is old and probably smelly at this point. So he needs <laughs> yeah, that's his no his nomad costume. Yeah. Like, Absolutely, my um, de definitely. I really appreciated the fact that the first human face we see in that <laughs> trailer is Tony Stark. I love that very much. I knew you would. It's, it's a nod to hey. This was the first movie that started the MCU. There it is right there, okay? We got to bring Tony back. And I also really love the nice little quick scene with uh, with Peter and his and his spidey senses were tingling on the forearm. Oh, that was like, and his oh, new suit. Yeah. Oh! It's so good. This is so much so many beautiful things and it's it's obviously, you know, as as you've all mentioned, it's a, a trailer that's definitely worth watching. I mean, that was things I picked up on the six, seven, the viewing of the trailer that I didn't see the first six, seven times. So yeah. much going on in that, and it's like, and it was, it was one of those trailers that it was like, just a good amount. Obviously, we want more. We're excited about Infinity War, but it wasn't like that's it. Like there was so much going on, and they didn't really give us too much about the story or the plot or anything like that. Even though a lot of us have read the comic and know what it's all about, but it, it was, it was mm -hmm. just the right amount of Marvel awesomeness. Uh, yeah. And and I'm a I'm a doc I'm a Doctor Strange fanatic. Like I've always loved Doctor Strange as a character. So just I want I want to see the before and after scene with with Strange and Stark. I want I, I want to see those moments. I want I want that conversation. I want to know how I really want I want to know how how uh, Hulk ends up in the Sanctum. How he ends up through the Sanctum. I I that's the sequence that I'll probably like geek out on. Yeah, more than I mean, anything else Jared, in the film. I'm with you. I mean, Christine, I, I'm, I'm with you on the Thor and the Guardians, but I mean, like, <laughs> seeing Stark and Strange and Wong and Banner all in that same shot in the Sanctum, I was like, That was oh, awesome, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my oh, life yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> uh, Pat, tell, tell me, sir, you're, how do you feel overall of the direction that the MCU has gone and taken leading up to this point and obviously it's it's very much inspired by a lot of some really well-known storylines but of course the mcu is very much its own thing and it alters things and changes things. what do you think overall of the changes that they've made to the current stories and going into infinity war how are you feeling about that i like it a lot i mean the thing is i i respect the fact that film and comics are two different mediums right. and you can't do everything that you do in the comics in film and vice versa you know, so that's why my my mentality is let them tell their story in the way they see fit. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not really, I don't really. I mean, yeah, if I want a faithful that, you know, if I want the exact same thing, I just read the comic again because yeah. that's that's what that's you know, the, well, like the comic was meant to be drawn as a comic. A movie is made differently. So if they have to change like something from the story to make it work, I have no problem. Like like just for, as an example. Uh, this is a controversial thing. Watchmen. I have no problem with them getting rid of the giant squid at the end and turning it into some kind of bomb. Thank it you. It makes sense. Thank yeah. you. Thank it's you. The same, Thank the you end so was, much. The end was the same result without all of the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So with Infinity War, I'm like, I don't need, you know, I mean, Thanos Quest is, you know, in, in the, in the, you know, it has its own book. And it was him collecting the gems from the elders of the universe. I have no problem 
with the stones or the gems ending up where they were at, the, at this point in time. It makes sense. You, could, you know, and at least we have some kind of connection to you know, those, even to, to the stones, really, because we got to see its journey from one point to another. Like, you know, especially like the, the Mind Stone, for example, like that, the journey that things went on from Avengers 1 to Age of Ultron to, the, to Vision and now, you know, now poor Vision. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Leave him alone. Yeah. I mean, the mo- I mean, the moment they put that thing on his forehead, you knew he was screwed. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. But there's there's a lot of like like I mean for the trailer like I I, I mentioned it earlier you know what I love about the Marvel storytelling the film very version of their storytelling is that they really they may, they they reward you for being loyal. Like that shot we were talking about just now with 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 Banner, uh, Wong, Doctor Strange, and Tony. If you freeze frame that and pay close enough attention, Tony has that little cell phone that Steve left him in Civil War. You know, call you know for whatever you know if you need help. Yep. <laughs> and like you notice that thing, like oh, oh, I was just, I was, I was about to lose it. <laughs> like there it is. And then there's also like the extra layer for 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 us old school nerds where. You know, Doctor Strange and the Hulk, they were the original defenders. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. All these little things. Mm-hmm. They, they, they love us. They, they throw, yeah. throw a lot of love our way in those beautiful Yeah. Things. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Dar- Darren, what, um, what's, what are you most excited about? What are you most excited to see in Infinity War? You know, um, it, it's... Can I tell you, like, it, it, it's one little small thing. I know because it's so it's so huge with everything else. Like, I, I'm I want everyone to have their moment, right. but there's a part of me that really just wants to know how what weird ass cameo will Stan make in this? <laughs> uh-huh. That's good. Yep. What? How? Like, just it, I don't. I, I mean. I think it would have to be memorable, but with so much memorable shit about to come my way, it would have to be huge but small at the same time. So it's just like, I know I'm going to get satisfied from everything that I've seen on the screen. (laughs) But I want to know what, how is Stan going to fit into this? Yes. Because if if he's a bus driver, if he's just the bus driver that's driving Peter through through that scene, it's going to be pretty (laughs) anticlimactic. Yeah, it has to be something of something of. I mean, the, the closest thing, the most cosmic thing he's been is you know he he was reporting to the Watchers right. and Guardians too. I mean, I want something like that. Yes, exactly. Oh yeah, you don't want him to turn around there and be like, "Hey, keep it you know, down back there, you kids." <laughs> you know, what, you want to make him make him an Infinity Stone, like make him just like <laughs> a walking, talking Infinity Stone. Puts it on the, on like the, the first, you see a face like hello. He's like, <laughs> right, like the first one they find, and just like he's just sleeping, and just like you just <laughs> pluck him out of the. <laughs> uh, Pat, what what's your overall thought on the the look that they've given Thanos in in this movie and his portrayal from Josh Brolin? I I think Josh Brolin was a good choice. There's something kind of menacing about him, the way he's the way he speaks, the way he and then he, and he sounds he sounds like an intelligent being. Yeah. Uh, as far as the design goes, you know, I, I I got no problem with him because he's you know he sported a similar look in the comics before, where he's you know he would there's there's like a series of Thanos issues where he's basically just traveling, mm-hmm. and uh, he and he wants to be inconspicuous, so he's wearing like a a more relaxed version of his costume. Yeah. But the thing is. Thanos is very physical, and you've seen that armored suit that he's had, like in his previous appearances. Like, how do you expect that guy to move around without any? I mean, yeah, I mean, besides, he's got all this power. He doesn't need to be super protected in the suit. He just, you know, he just does whatever. He's he's like a he's like a purple Hulk, you know, basically, you know, but he, but with, with with like the with like five hundred times the brain power and and you know all, all these other powers aside from strength. So I don't I don't see any issue with the design at all. Um, I, I I see the thought process behind it, and you know. It's 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 cool. It works. I mean, it's still you see it. You still see it's him because it also matches kind of uh, his first appearance look. Except he doesn't he doesn't have his cowl anymore, which is a very signature look for him. But it still works. You see, he's still got that chin with all those ridges and all that. So that's still him. 
he, you know, they, they wanted to make it practical. They wanted to make it look like he can either like well, wipe out half the universe in a snap, or you know, throw down yeah. some cross, CrossFit sessions. I don't know. And, you know, and he's traveling. And he's traveling right now as someone yeah. who's just been doing a lot of traveling and right. traveling while pregnant. I wear sweatpants because that shit's comfortable. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's like the Thanos' version of like, this is my leisure wear. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't, I don't need my armor to just feed yeah. me. Which, and which I think he's. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be something epic that he builds to once he gets all the gems. I think it's gonna be like oh. some some epic fucking armor that he just like whips out. Like his- I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he does that either. I mean, you know, he could do once he has all of them. It, it's uh, there's really no limit as to what he's gonna do. Yeah. Huh? I don't know, friends. I don't know how we can wait till May, but uh, th- thankfully we have a Black Panther movie. In the of the oh, that's gonna yes. be so good. Yes, yeah. Like, and 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 like you said, like you were talking about Christina and Darren, like seeing this trailer just like whets my appetite for that movie even more. It's just, oh like, yeah. I'm already exactly. excited now. I'm like, ah, I want to see how that gets from there to there. Like, <laughs> so good, you guys. Um, are you are you guys planning right now on doing anything crazy, special, or cool when the movie comes out? I'll. I have a plan to kind of see it in different cities over the over that month, uh, if everything goes as planned. Um, and depending how health things are, yeah, that, that that's that's one of my big things. Like I want to see it with as many of my friends as possible. So you know, I, I like that people are already trying to reserve their spot basically to see it with me. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's my one bum, one thing I bummed out about not living in LA is that I won't be able to see it with you. Yeah. Which yeah, bums me yeah. out. <laughs> I, my my goal is to go back to the El Cap opening night to see it. Yes. Avengers there, and I saw Age of Ultron there, and I've seen every other Avengers movie at that theater. So I, I have yeah, and to I go s- back. And I think the Iron Man ones too. I can't remember which movie I saw with you at the. Uh, we saw Iron Man three. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Time and, and, Shane, and Shane Black did the, uh, the intro for that. One. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he came, yeah. In, he came and did the intro, which is super cool. So, uh, Darren, <laughs> Darren, what what do you what are your big plans for Infinity War, man? Any, I don't have any. Yeah, I don't have any huge plans. I kind of would like to, to see it with some, with some friends, but I think ultimately I'd probably love to just go with go with my wife. Yeah. Just the two of us, just have a just have a night of it, just going just to go and enjoy it and just and talk about later, but. You know, don't have any huge fans. I'm kind of in. Uh, you know, I'm I'm in the, I'm in the south. I don't have any family around here. Uh, so I'm, so it's, it's. I, I honestly, I want to see it, and I want to talk to you guys about it. Beautiful. Like that's. Uh, we'll I'm kind of, yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat as Darren because I don't really have anybody here except my husband. Um, and also my baby is due April 23rd. So. I'm going to have to find somebody like to pass her off to and be like, okay, so like, I know that this seems really terrible, but like, you're going to have to push yeah. my infant daughter so I can go watch this. Movie. We have the, the Infinity Wars and, you know, things are happening. I, so I can't, I'm not going to do that to people and take her with me. That's just not cool. Or to her. It's so loud. But like, please take her for just a couple hours so I can go see this. Yes. <laughs> That's, I'm so excited, you guys. And, I, and then, like you guys said, I can't wait to come back and talk about it once we find it. It's, um, yeah. And, and, you, and Darren, we were talking about this, man. Like, we, we can't forget, because the world kind of forgot a little bit that December is for the other wars, but uh, we're, 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 tomorrow's December days. 1st. That means we're so close to... 17 mm-hmm. days! I know. <laughs> wait, 16 days. 16? 17? No, wait. No, we're less than I think, it's, well, I think yes. it's, we're, we're 16. The 15th, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, 16 if you count today. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's even better. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, I'll put it to you this way, because see, I have um. Oh no, no, this, this is that's for Black Panther, but no, I, I, I got plans for, I got plans for Star Wars. I, I've got, I got people lined up, people who owe me favors, who will, who will be watching my children. Excellent. <laughs> that's that's you got That's why you got to save those favors, man. You keep them in the wings. Mm-hmm. Like that. Yeah, I'm still I'm still debating. I have tickets both bought here yeah. in Texas, which I don't want to see it here. Um, <laughs> and I have te- I have tickets bought in Orange County with a whole bunch of friends who rented out a theater. So 
I'm really tempted to check flights and see how cheap they are, even though traveling right now is miserable for me. It might be worth it because I want to see it with people that, that love it as much as I do. And, and bless Brian. He likes Star Wars, but he doesn't understand. Like, if I start, I'm going to cry the whole time. I'm going to be a mess. Yeah. And I think he just won't know how to handle this. <laughs> <laughs> but my friends will. Like, I saw it with one of my really good friends, um, Dawn. She's one of my best friends. And, like, I think we ended up holding hands even at one point. Yeah. And, I just I need my people to see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know. It, it seems like for some reason I never get to see it on opening night with friends. Like for some reason, all my friends all hate seeing movies in 3D all of a sudden. Yeah. I like it. Uh. <laughs> I'm all case in point. The only ones that were for sale anywhere were 3D. I have no choice. No matter where I go, I'm staying in 3D, which I'm okay with. I just wanted to see it regular first and then go back and see it in 3D. But it'll be fine. It's still Star Wars. I don't care in what version I see it. I just want to see it. Well, it's 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 vastly approaching, friends. But in other Marvel news, the the rest of uh, Pat's crew, the Agents of Shield, make their return to TV tomorrow in a special two-hour season premiere. And um, they uh, there was some news this week about somebody who's joining the cast this season. And it's and if you're uh, if you've got small children, uh, if you were a teenager in the last decade. Um, you probably know who Dove Cameron is. She was in a gazillion Disney shows. And she's going to be joining the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this season in a, a very top secret role. We don't know who she's playing yet, I don't think. Um, there was a cute little video on Twitter where she was about to drop it and Coulson came and took her away. So uh, uh, be, besides me, and I think Darren still this, Pat, are you still, are you, do you watch Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Unfortunately, I don't. It's, it's, uh, I don't really have a lot of time for TV okay. lately. Like, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I work mostly at night, so you know, it, it's. And I, and I feel like it, it, the, sh the show, unfortunately, didn't quite work for me. Okay. Like, I, I like tried watching the first couple seasons. It's right. just not. It, it wasn't for me. But, uh, um, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot. If there's something, uh, you know, something big going on. Because the last time I was into it, you know, it was when they. It was around the time Winter Soldier came out, and I thought that was a really cool tie-in. Yeah. That, that's definitely one of the cool things that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tends to do is there's always a, at least a little nod or a mention of, of things and movies that are coming out. Um, so I'm kind of curious as to what, if anything, they're going to, how they're going to tie in this season with Infinity War or with Black Panther. Um, Darren, what do, what do you, uh, are you, are you going to be watching tomorrow and uh, what do you think about uh, the new cast members? Well, I'm definitely going to be checking it out and I'm, I'm already in the midst of speculating on who she's going to be. Because if she's playing a, uh, she's playing an agent, I'm just literally kind of going through my roster of agents. Yeah. But considering they're on a what looks like a Cree prison in outer space, yeah. maybe she's not playing a human at all. And if that's the case, then who, 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 young and blonde in the Marvel universe that's not Captain Marvel could she be playing? <laughs> could she be playing? So that's you know that that I'm 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 both contracting and expanding my my speculation on who she is. Well, she can't be Sharon either. Exactly. So. Yeah, interesting. There's um. There's definitely um. There, some of the articles I was reading, they're talking about the style and the feel of this season is definitely going to be one of the biggest changes from any of the others. I mean, it starts in space for God's sake. And, and really. Any, yeah, and I think anything space related in the Marvel universe right now makes sense. I mean, that's kind of yes. where we are in this current phase. It's a good to me. I think it's. A Especially after the end of Ragnarok. I mean, they're making that very clear, yeah. That... Um, there, there, there are some talks about it. It's definitely got some very, we'll say, uh, they said alien, you know, Ridley Scott alien territory in, in some Ooh. of the uh, early episodes of this season. Um, there, there's definitely, they said a lot more, um, we'll say, scary, like, jumpy things that are going to happen, especially in tomorrow's episode. So I'm kind of really, I'm really looking forward to um, what this season is going to bring because it, I feel like it, it was time for a good shakeup in, in the uh, in the show. So I'm curious to see where it's going to go and like I said, how it's going to tie. In. But uh, yeah, it's, that's hitting tomorrow, friends. Tomorrow, eight o'clock. Uh, my time. I don't know. Is Jeremy, you say something? Uh, well, I'll, I'll say that all the stuff your 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 pitch right now, I, I'm I'm curious about, so I'm gonna give that a shot tomorrow. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice, yeah. excellent, <laughs> very good, friends. Um, let's talk about let's talk a little bit about the X Men. Obviously, since the whole uh, rumors about uh, Marvel and Fox merger, um, people have been going apeshit talking about what could possibly come from that merger. 
and of course, obviously, one of the big obvious ones is the X Men uh, joining in the MCU. And um, recently, apparently, uh, Vanity Fair uh, was having some several in depth pieces uh, honoring the MCU for its 10th anniversary. Uh, X Men producer Lauren Schuler Donner threw in her support to have the mutants icons team up with the Avengers. Uh, she stated, "Well, I wish, I, I wish, I would love it." She said, "I would love it, but it's not for me to say." Um, I think uh, another big thing that um, was dropped in that issue was um, Kevin Feige kind of saying, oh, "Well, right now there's not really any movement toward it at all." So, no, same thing, same status as far as that goes. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think that's uh, Kevin Feige blowing smoke up our ass and trying to cover up something big that could happen, or? really think we probably won't get that kind of team up well um it could be anything the, the, the thing is like we didn't know about the spider-man thing until way later on you know like they didn't know that they had this thing going on until way later on in the process too so who knows yeah. i mean i would love to see it happen uh you know i, I but there's so many things kind of working against it too yeah. and I don't know. I, I, I have mixed feelings about it, but I would like to see the X-Men done right, you know? Yes, please, God. But, but you know what's interesting? What's interesting, Pat, and Darren and I were talking about this before the show. They're, they just said that, what was it, Darren, that Marvel has another, like, 20 movies that they're planning to throw out? In the yeah, I mean, that's according to Feige. He's got, like, they said there's, like, another 20 movies coming, and he didn't necessarily speculate that they were all MCU-specific. So, I mean, it could be, maybe he does have some information that we don't, that it might be something along the lines of, hey, uh, in 2020 or 2022, you may be seeing a new Fantastic Four movie be once this thing goes through, or you may not? see it. I know you don't, but I love, I, I'm sorry, I love Fantastic Four. I mean, but they did it right, maybe, but like, Jesus Christ, how many times do we have to do the movie? But I'm saying, right. um, I'm saying you may be seeing the MCU version. Okay. Um, you know, you can see the Fantastic Four finally done right, which I'm all for. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, just, you know, 20 movies that we like, it, so we were talking, it, it could be something as as specific as an X-Men related movie because they get because they get the characters. Or it could be what I was saying. I would love to see a, a Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur film Ooh. come out. Give me that would a, be cool. Like I said, so that's, you know, so I mean, 20 movies, it can be pretty much anything. You just basically just like go through your stack of everything and see what could possibly shake loose. Yep. The, uh, on, the, on the subject of upcoming Marvel movies, sir, a little bit news about the, uh, about the Captain Marvel movie that's upcoming. You, uh, as big fans as we all were of Rogue One, um, one of the great uh, actors in that film, of course, was Ben Mendelsohn as a director Krennic. And he is apparently tied to the role of the villain in Captain Marvel. He's a Kree colonel named Jan Rog. I think I'm saying that right? Yeah, yeah, you got, you got it right. <laughs> yeah, Rog, uh, who will be reportedly played, uh, who, is, who is basically the rival of Marvel, who of course is being played by Jude Law in the film. Um, if, uh, if they're saying that the personality that, um, that Mr. Mendelssohn had in Rogue One is very similar to the character that he's going to be portraying, it's, it's obviously a good choice. Um, I think he was a he was a good uh, villain, so to speak, and uh, I, I, I'm anxious to see him in something else uh, besides the Star Wars, and especially in the MCU. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I feel like he's. I mean, I think it. First of all, that's a really deep dive for that character. Like, yeah, that's that's a deep cut. Like, wow, you gone wrong. It's been a while since I've heard yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, I I think. I think it'll be cool. I kind of wish he. I, I I kind of am dreading it though because I don't know. He's not a major villain by any means at least at this point. I would like for him to be like a, a me. You know, I hope to play like a character that's far meatier or far you know far more important. Because I don't know. That, I thought he was great, real one, and yeah. he he, he kind of hammed it up in dark in Dark Knight Rises, but. I can forgive him for that. <laughs> yeah. I forgot he was in that. No, I totally forgot he was in that. Yeah, like... yes. <laughs> Darren, uh, your thoughts, man, on the Captain Marvel movie? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with Pat. Yeah, it is a, definitely a, a deep cut. I think he can, I think he can pull it off. But my, my worry is that 
is that Jan Rog becomes too much like Krennic. I mean, you got two ambitious guys who, you know, who deal with things emotionally. And considering that so much of the so much of what the talk about the film was about the scrolls being being the being the bad guys in it, like it, you have the I mean, I worry that you have too many bad guys in the film already. So I mean have him have him be there, but maybe have him kind of be a mastermind or behind the scenes thing, don't and and then build build his menace so that I actually care. <laughs> yeah. So Christina, um I, the, the, the next little tidbit I want to drop real quick. I know you're super excited about because I know you love the new Harley Quinn in the in the uh, DCEU <laughs> films. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> but um but Why apparently Argo Robbie has confirmed that she will be shooting next year again as Harley Quinn. Has not stated, you know, in conjunction with what film or what project, but we do know that she's going to be back uh, behind the screen as uh, everybody's favorite version of Harley Quinn. <laughs> Kill me. I don't think she was a terrible casting choice, but Suicide Squad is like the worst for you. I know. Fucking garbage it's so bad i tried i tried to watch the whole thing and i could not i watched it on the plane for free and it's just like looking around the plane like is it because a couple other people were watching it, and i'm like how the fuck can you this is not enjoyable this is terrible it was really bad you know, you know that meme of that little baby in the back seat like that, that was kind of your face the whole time <laughs> it was oh my god and I don't I don't say that often about movies but that was just not even remotely enjoyable did you hate Suicide Squad as much as Christina <laughs> it was pretty bad I, I mean I think the moment that movie started the moment they started throwing like I don't know, is it the director's playlist or what going <laughs> random because like these random music choices is like yeah. what are they trying to do here? Like it's just like some kind of bizarro version of Guardians or whatever with the music. And and I mean it had a few moments that I really enjoyed and you know, but at the same time I'm just like this is yeah, it it, it it's like the first time I watched it, I was like that was kinda of fun. Then I watched it again, oh Jeez, it's getting worse each time, <laughs> and you really start to see the, the, like the holes and the lack of an actual plot. And yeah, yeah my, my 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 thing about it was is I never said it was a great movie. I just said it was fun. I had fun watching yeah. it. That was, and and that's t typically what I want out of a movie. I want to enjoy it. I want to have fun while I'm in there for an hour and a half, two hours, whatever. Yeah. You know, if if there's you know Margot Robbie prancing around as Harley Quinn, that's an added bonus. Whatever. Okay, but you know, like it, like you said, it's not a great movie. It's not gonna win any points for, you know, top even. It won an Oscar. Yeah, not top forty <laughs> comic book movies even. Okay, but you know what? I, I get it. Like I can, I know there was a lot wrong with the movie, and you know, I'm I'm not under any delusions that it's something. Like that. But I, hopefully, maybe the next one will be better. Christina, will you give it a chance again? Oh yeah, no, I will. I mean, Wonder Woman, DC, the DCU's won me back a little bit with Wonder Woman. Um. It still had its issues, but I still liked it a lot. Um, I will see Justice League eventually, but I'm probably going to wait until it comes out on streaming or whatever. Um, I don't have any desire to sit through that in the theater. I'm sorry. I mean, it might be good. I don't know. I just, I've heard mixed things about it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do what I did with Wonder Woman, and I'm going to wait till I'm in the privacy of my own home right. so I don't make any kind of loud commentary if I'm annoyed. <laughs> Maybe by the time it comes out, you know, for for home video or whatever, they'll really fix up, you know, Henry Cavill's upper lip. Oh my god, it's so bad. Uh, Darren, you're one of the guys like myself that enjoyed it quite a bit. Were you not? Well, I'll put it to you. Yes. Yeah, I I enjoyed it. I, I actually saw it twice. I went uh, the first time. I took uh, both my boys and and a friend. And I enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed the film. I enjoyed it uh, with them. I, I thought it was the the high mark for them was they came out and they were, you know, playing the characters. And one wanted to be Superman. One wanted to be Batman. One was being Aquaman. And that was enjoyable. That was fun. That took me back. Then I went and saw it with my wife. And my wife is is my my wife is my counterpart. So she's critical. She's critical, but not mean. But she's critical. It's like you know what? It like I didn't like this. I didn't like that. And she enjoyed it. So I mean, I enjoy, I enjoyed it, and it was a part. And don't necessarily think about other people's opinions, 
but the fact that I was able to enjoy it twice in two different circumstances meant the movie was a win for me. But I am with Christina on Suicide Squad. I just, I, it just was not fun. I wish I would have had fun watching it. I, because I mean, Harley's my girl and I just, and I like the Suicide Squad. I like Deadshot and everything. I just, uh, uh, why? Because I think it could have been good. I think that the cast was actually a, a pretty solid choice. But I feel it, it, it's apparent that there were definitely some reshoots in there. I think that was that around the time Guardians came out. Did they watch Guardians and was like, we should make it fun, guys? And then just like jammed it in there. We were like, that doesn't fit though. This is weird. I don't know. I think, I think there's some kind of stuff in, going on with the with the director who had to reach. I, I, I don't know exactly what the reshoots were. I think they tried to, to make it a bit more. I guess fun. I, I, I don't know exactly what, what they did in the reshoots, but I know there was some kind of thing that they wanted to change in the tone of the movie, and then it became this weird, much like Justice League. At least, just, at least this one kept the same director throughout the whole process. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. too much fun for the sake of fun. Yeah, guys. yeah. I, I mean, I mean, we were talking about Justice League just now. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I'm on the record. Well, you know, I enjoyed that movie. It was a lot of fun. It had a lot of problems though, yeah. and. It. I feel. I. I. I feel so bad for like you know the, the really faithful DC fans because they're like they feel like they're obligated to watch this movie more than once now because they they're worried that it might not do well right. and kind of then that kind of sucks. Yeah. Well, and and Darren, I said this when I when I saw it, you know a little early ahead of you know most people. The I I will say that just the fact that I enjoyed immensely. Watching Henry Cavill be Superman for the first time. Not talking about the mustache situation. Okay? Oh yeah. <laughs> watching him be Superman, I loved it. I thought it was great. I got a little teary at one point. That was enough for me. That that yeah. was enough. For Dude, me. like the the uh, this is kind of a minor spoiler. Yeah. So the scene where Flash is rescuing that family. Yeah. When he was on his way to rescue that family, and he and Superman kind of you know, kind of catches up with him. You're like. Yeah, um, yeah. He's like, they're like, yeah. You go on the right, I'll go on the left. Right. We'll, we'll, you know, save people. So he, you know, so Flash pushes this this truck full of, of people out of the way. While he, after he's, he put, he pulls them aside and they're safe, he looks to the other side. There's Superman flying a building full of people out of harm's way. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, that's Superman. Exactly. Yeah. Get it. That, that that whole scene right there was so quintessentially Superman. I was yeah. like, Okay, I'm good with this movie. I don't care what else happens. I don't care how bad the CGI Steppenwolf looks or his <laughs> mustache. I'm good with this movie right now. That's yeah, it. yeah. Superman is finally realized on film, and I feel like I hope it's not too late. I think they can they can still do more with that. I I think he yeah. he was so good in that role. They, they need to. They need to do more. With yeah. It. Now that they seem to have figured it out with him, but um, yeah. But but nonetheless, anyways, that that was. Yeah, I mean, he's, their he's casting choices more, are more. solid. Their casting choices are always so solid. It's just a matter of. DC's direction. Right, yeah, I don't know. Right it's, material. Yes. I agree, friend. Um, speaking of DC, and, and we got a little quick second before we uh, close out tonight to talk about um, uh, a, a big comic event that finally hit the hit the uh, the comic book stands. And, and we kind of mentioned, Pat dropped the name earlier. Uh, we're talking about the Watchmen Justice League crossover. We're talking about Doomsday Clock. Um, Darren, I'm sure you've read it because you read everything. Yeah. <laughs> and Pat, have you have you read uh, Doomsday Clock? Yes, I have. What What are yeah. you guys thinking about so far? I'm like I'm I'm terribly terribly not in the know when it comes to really anything current in the DC comic universe. Um, I know very little about it. Um, obviously, I I love Watchmen. It's one of my like a lot of people. It's one of my favorite graphic novels. I even love the movie. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see where it's going to go. I'm a little lost right now, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, the thing about the, this first issue, it is a first issue, and much like the original Watchmen, first issue was just you know, there's a lot of setup. It's introducing you to this new world. Uh, it's basically six years after the first Watchmen story ended, uh, and. Uh, like I, I I don't know how how you feel about about talking you know spoilers here. Uh, any uh, okay, everyone cool with it? Yeah. So you remember at the end of Watchmen, like you know, he Rorschach dropped that diary off in in, mm -hmm. in that one in that newspaper, and it, you know detailing everything he knows. Well, that kind of goes out, 
and they realize that this whole the whole thing was a hoax and Adrian invites Ozymandias as a wanted man. He's on the run. It's 1992. Um, we are introduced to a new to, to Rorschach, yeah. who is a completely new character, and I will I will not get into it much further than that. Like yeah. they haven't revealed his identity anyway, yeah. but. There's 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 an overall mission, and we don't really get any DCU stuff until like the last page. Yeah. And I feel like if you know, if you've only read Watchmen, and you know who Superman is, or you know the DCU, you could just pick it up and read it. Yeah, that's that's the, the, I mean. the the first Watchmen is the, first, the only prerequisite you need for this one. Right, and, and that's kind of where I was at, and I figured you know if that was the case, hopefully I'd, I'd still enjoy it enough. So. I obviously like the tone of it so far. It definitely feels like the first Watchmen with, you know, mm -hmm. Rorschach doing a lot of the opening dialogue in the issue, which I think is cool. I mean, the, the book I picked up is one of the variant covers that's got the lenticular Rorschach face mm -hmm. on the front and then the ink blots turn into the symbols of the Trinity on the front, which is really neat. I, I was like, that's mine. I want it. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, um, so I'm, really, I'm really excited. And, of course, Superman being my all-time favorite DC character. Yeah him at the end was was definitely a win for this issue for me um darren what are you going to say about the book man well, as I was say, I'm, uh, I, I enjoyed it. I like the fact that the bulk of the first issue was Watchmen, get me back into that world, uh, get me back into those characters. <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the new characters there, they're kind of introducing, I'll, I'll you know, I, I'm reserving judgment on. I thought one of the most interesting parts was Ha not only the fact not only where superman is and at the end of this at the end of the first issue but the circumstances that they choose to show like i want to know how the i want to know how what the repercussions of that are going forward and why and why it's significant why why make that choice on what on what they did with superman so that's yeah i have to pick this up because i watchman is probably my number one favorite actually to be perfectly honest i've read it the most and i actually didn't know about this because i don't i don't follow dc at all i just ask <laughs> my comic shop for marvel and image stuff um but i'm definitely gonna have to pick that up because i am yeah that sounds awesome you gotta get a friend <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, i'm very intrigued to see uh, to read the rest of it so i think it's a very yeah. cool concept and uh, anything with more watchmen i'm all about it yes yeah but uh, friends that's a good spot to wrap up tonight because uh, we went over a little long, but it always happens to <laughs> cool people like Pat on the show. Um, my friend Pat, I'm going to let you start off tonight with your final thought, and this is where you can take you know, your last 60 seconds to plug, say, or do whatever you want, man. Thrill us. Get crazy with it. <laughs> I, don't know about that. I, don't know about that. I don't really have anything exciting else to, else to get into, but um, <laughs> social media, just find me there at Pat Loika, and uh, – yeah, it was fun to chat with you guys, and I'm you know if you guys ever want me back on, I'll, I'll be up for it. You know, yeah, like we'll maybe definitely have yeah. You back on. <laughs> yeah, 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 hit me up. It's it's fun. It's fun to chat. It's, especially when you get your book closer to being completely completed, we we definitely want to talk to you more, man. But yeah. but you know, any any time uh any time we got some open space, and we, we're gonna I'm gonna hit you up, man. All right. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Awesome, man. Mister Darren, generally, sir, final thought me this evening. I don't. Ooh, don't really have a whole lot of uh, final thoughts other than you know what I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying comics I'm enjoying the storylines right now I'm actually really kind of getting into a lot of the Marvel Legacy stuff like it is it really kind of it really is reminding me of a lot of the things that I enjoyed about the comics when I was reading them like in the 80s and 90s like I read the I read Dark Hawk 51 oh, yes. and yeah and that one i really i really enjoyed because it just like it's it, it was almost like it didn't it didn't miss a beat yeah. from the last time i had read dark hawk yeah. so that's that's definitely one that uh that's definitely what i what i would enjoy i didn't think i was gonna get into legacy but a lot of the stuff that they're putting out there is it's is starting to kind of bring me back in yeah. very cool man awesome buddy Darren, tell these beautiful people again where they can find you on on the twitter sphere and the rest of the interwebs Oh, you can find me at Superpowered Fan on Twitter. You can always uh, go to my website, superpoweredfancast.com, or find me on Geeks Worldwide at thegww.com. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, the lovely Mrs. Christina Walker. What do you have this week? <laughs> uh, well, I started playing Animal Crossing Camp, and I'm <laughs> so obsessed. I can't like play it like multiple times a day. It's a lot of fun. Um, my OCD 
behavior is like perfect for it and it like takes away my anxiety. So if you have the game and want to add me as a friend, just tweet at me or message me and I'll send you my game code. Um, also picked up Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, finally reading that. And I have blown through half of it in one day and I love it. Um, and I finally saw Ragnarok and I saw it with my big brother. So and I, I don't know where I rank it yet. I saw, I need to go watch it again, but I loved the shit out of it. Like that was not only a lot of fun, it was the best way I believe they could have in the cinematic universe showed Ragnarok because it's a little too dark otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you've ever read classic Thor, which I grew up reading, which is goofy as hell, they did such a good job. Like, yes, it was all of my yes. I loved it. I'm really in it. Yes, yeah. yeah. It was really good. Um, but yeah, and then you guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at boobafet83. And there's an underscore between booba and fet. Yes. Thank you, my friend. You're amazing as always. Uh, for my final thought, let's see. Um, I think uh, I might I might be partaking in a Christmas parade this weekend as Darth Ooh. Vader. There's a strong possibility of that, so always fun when I get to be the Dark Lord and, you know, on a parade float raised above everybody where I should be. Hot <laughs> <above the> <laughs> uh, that's always a good time, so uh, hopefully I get to do that. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just, uh, I'm just enjoying all the sights and sounds of Christmas, and uh, I have to get my geek tree up tomorrow, which is comprised of 60% uh, of Star Wars Hallmark ornaments with another 20% yes. of Marvel Hallmark ornaments. And, like, nice. And stuff in between. So, uh, yeah, that'll be going up tomorrow. So I'll post some pictures when I get that going. But, friends, that's it for tonight. Thanks, as always, for checking us out. Please continue checking us out over at thegww.com for all the latest and greatest in movie, TV, tech, comics, games, and so much more. All the beautiful people always putting up amazing articles. Everything tickle your fancy. If you like something geeky, it's probably there on the site. So please check it out. You can find us on Twitter at the underscore geek side pod where this whole crew and a lot of other crazy people are always tweeting about crazy things like Infinity War and God only knows what else. And you can find me on Twitter at Darth Sparrow, my friends. Thank you so much. Thank you to Pat Loika again, my friend. We'll hope to talk to you again soon. And uh, as always, friends, make sure you stay walking that fine line and don't fall into that side, but you want to fall in this side, which is what side? Boom, the geek side. We'll see you next time, guys. All right.